Um, so it might seem strange that a communication person is here talking in the treatment stream, um, but at the Responsible Gambling Fund, which is within the Office of Liquor, Gaming and Racing, we work very closely with our, uh, our counselling services to support them with communication stuff. And that's right from the pre-contemplation stage, which this tool is about, right through to post-treatment support with things like, say, this little credit card that we give people to keep in their wallet to remind them that they've been through it and they don't want to be there again. So, um, obviously, don't need to tell you about the explosion in sports betting that's probably been more acute in New South Wales than in any other uh, constituency uh, in the world. Um, I think that it's, again, no notes, a 14% compound increase over the past five years in the number of people who actually use sports betting. And in terms of money, 1,940% increase in the per capita spend on sports betting over the past 20 years, which is just slightly above inflation. So, you know, I, I think that we, we can have a point there. I mean, I think that in Australia, where you get to a point where one of your major sporting venues is now called Centrebet Stadium, you know that it's infiltrated the whole, um, the whole society. Um, okay. So we're looking at, at a, a group that is the, the kind of descriptors of the demographic kind of factors are on the left there of the group that we're, we're targeting. Normally with our communications we'd be just be targeting, targeting the centre, the blue uh, dot, the problem gamblers. With this app we're extending it uh, to frequent gamblers and we're trying to um, educate them in a way so that they don't move into that central um, blue spot. Um, we know that they're men, we know that their mean age is 39, they're obviously committed sports fans. Um, they're much less aware of potential harm of their gambling. Um, and obviously, in my invisible notes, one of the points is obviously I'm acknowledging here that of problem gamblers in New South Wales, as in everywhere else, they are overwhelmingly from electronic gaming machines and not from sports betting. However, um, as Gerda spoke this morning, it's kind of apt that our theme today is about, about oceans because I think that with the sheer volume of marketing that sports betting agencies are putting into the New South Wales market, I think that that represents the earthquake out at sea. And now we're just waiting, perhaps two years later, for the tidal wave to arrive. So we're preparing for that. Um, it's interesting about the timing of, of uh, the placing of bets, and I think that it's with the upswing in mobile devices as opposed to uh, computers that probably change. So obviously in any um, campaign like ours, um, early intervention is the holy grail. Um, you get in early, you cause a lot less damage to people, less damage to individuals, relationships. There's a better chance of long-term recovery. There's obviously lower costs for the government, so they should be very much pro-early intervention, but only 8 to 17% of problem gamblers ever seek professional help, and at that time, most have hit rock bottom and are in crisis, and basically, no one seeks, seeks help early, and we'll just get to that in a second. And I've got to say that um, this interesting bit of research that found the term gamble responsibly or game responsibly, as you say, in, in um, New Zealand is almost counter-effective. Um, no, it uh, doesn't work at all. Okay, so denial is what it's all about. Um, like this poor little kitty over here, uh, it's refusing to see where, 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 where the danger is. I'm not, no, it's not, it's not me, it's not me. None of this over here could possibly relate to me. Um, I'm, um, you know, any message that is about problem gambling I'm, is invisible to me. I explain it to, to people normally as though it's like before you have a baby, the baby products in the supermarket are invisible to you, and after you have a baby, suddenly you see them <laughs> with, with people who haven't admitted that they have a problem, they haven't self-identified as a problem gambler, they, they're just not seeing you. So. There's a differentiation between what, what Stay on Track really is and how we describe it to our consumers for that very reason. 
So in our terms, it's an early intervention tool for at-risk gamblers that teaches them how to set and stick to a budget. And m most of these guys have never even con considered setting and sticking to a budget before. Shows cumulative losses over time. And it balances the optimism bias by reinforcing the real odds. Um, it's something that, as well as acting as an early intervention, that our gambling help counsellors can use as an adjunct to treatment as well. And um, it's a self-help tool that can easily be like, prescribed by our other services who aren't seeing people face to face. How we sell it to our, to our audience is not that at all. It's a smart tool for savvy punters. Um, it keeps track of your betting budget, it creates patterns of wins and losses because, of course, problem gamblers have a very <coughs> strong belief in patterns of, of wins and losses. It records all your bets and it gives you a snapshot of where you currently stand. Um, so I'm just going to quickly take you through the app. The, the uh, information that I've got on the side here is taken from um, the directions that we give to uh, users. So I'm not going to read all of that out. That's just, yeah, that's consumer language. I'll just go through it more from our perspective. So um, <clears throat> you put in your, your details, your email address, um, and then you tell it how often you'd like it to remind you to update your bets. If you're a very frequent gambler, that might be twice a day. If you're a weekend gambler or whatever, it might be a couple of times a week. Um, you, and we encourage people to do this in their own pay cycle. Their own pay cycle might be one week, two weeks, or a month. You set what your pay cycle is, and you put in how much you're going to spend on gambling in that pay cycle. And that in itself forms sort of commitment. Um, you enter your bets and results using those, um, those, uh, that screen and uh, it automatically updates with the date and you can put in the category. As well as, because we know that people cr are better across platforms, problem gamblers better across platforms a lot. Um, we've included things that aren't sports betting, there aren't online betting as well, um, but we know that people are probably less likely to put in their pokey wins and losses and so forth in there, but they can if they want. So that's what your bets look like as you've entered them. You lose every time, as you notice. Um, okay, so basically this is the uh, algorithm that we use. So that's how much you're spending in the time and that's the tracking period. So the line moves across as a percentage of how much you've spent and a percentage of how much time you has elapsed. So it's sort of judging you on that. Um, yes, that's the same. Now, this is where the catch is. This is sort of hidden and we don't advertise it a lot, but this is, this is the aha moment, I think, for a lot of people because this is the cumulative amount that you've lost since you downloaded this app. People who tend to think from pay period to pay period are often deeply shocked when they have the irrefutable evidence in front of them of how much they've spent because then they can equate it to what else they might have bought in the meantime. Okay, so with the tracking screen that we saw before, it, it changes colour depending on how you're going and the messages on the left change depending on, you know, your current situation. So. If it's green, you're tracking well against your budget and the messages are encouraging, good, you're taking it steady, you know, you're doing okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, when it's blue, it's a, it's a caution, um, you know, and you get little cautionary tales up here, uh, cautionary tales, cautionary messages up here saying, meh, you might want to just ease back a little bit, you know, if you want your budget to last the full period. When you're well over budget, it's red and the messages are stronger and they're encouraging you to reflect on whether this is where you want to be and whether you want to seek help. If you, in this, you can go way over 100% of your budget, by the way, you can go to 200, you can go to 1,000% of your budget on this, it doesn't stop. Um, if you win, by the way, it will go back to, you know, if you, let's just say that you've spent $100 and you win $100, We'll go back to the beginning again because we're not concerned about that. We're just concerned about how much money you spend out of your wage every 
every pay period. Okay, so win, lose, or draw, that's, that's a bottom line for us. Um, and yes, so it also refers you down the bottom to the advice section, which has got some, uh, some it refers you to some of our self-help tools and also just gives you some general tips on um, how to cut back and how to observe your own gambling. Um, and it also uh, it kind of encourages you to go straight to, there, there's a, I don't have the screen up actually, it's, there's a click to connect to our online counselling and there's a click to connect to our phone counselling. So just by pressing that option on your phone and putting it to your ear, you're instantly talking to somebody. Um, um, and you can also subscribe to uh, an automated SMS message uh, that you get daily. It's a new one every day um, and, and they're messages of encouragement and coaching and all of that sort of thing just to remind you and keep you steady. So it, the red, without being too heavy handed about it I think, the red uh, screens can lead you gently to sources of help that you might need. So we haven't had massive um, uptake from it so far, but I think that we're just moving into a, a period where we're going to be promoting it more heavily, which is in, we kind of launched it at a low time and uh, we're moving into our fall, which means that football season's getting underway and the autumn racing carnival is getting underway and these are the channels that we'll be promoting it for because like I say, we're not promoting it to problem gamblers, we're just promoting it to ordinary punters. So we'll be evaluating it at six months. One of the evaluations that we'll make is referral um, to another person in your social media network. Um, we'll be looking at, again, how it's used with our counsellors and um, what their feedback is. So uh, <laughs> there you go, race through that one. There you go, that pays not to have your own um, speaking notes with you clearly. Oh, thank you. You're very quick. <laughs> I've got a lot of questions. So it's very taken with it. I think it's a great app. Um, can I ask the first question? How are you, how are you marketing it at this yeah. stage? Um, well, we started off, we asked, um, we asked sports betting uh, websites to uh, use their social media channels to promote it which they did for a short period of time, which was helpful. Um, and as I say, moving forward, we've got better opportunities, I think, during, n not over the summer since it's been released, but now as we're hitting the autumn, when, when sports betting ramps up and, and track betting ramps up, um, we'll have a better chance. So we'll be going through those channels, through TAB and through um, uh, the individual, uh, we, we have good relationships with our with uh, the rugby league teams in New South Wales, and we'll be asking them to promote it through their websites as well, directly to their their people, so that we're kind of getting it direct to the punters, and not through but not through a channel that suggests that anyone has a problem, mm -hmm. you know. So that's uh, you know it's, it's I suppose it's a soft launch in a way to to kind of let it go out see how it tracks, see if whether anyone's got any major glitches with it or problems, and then promote it more strongly a uh, little bit down the track. Excellent. Now, I won't monopolise. I've got some more questions, but any questions on the floor? It's free, of course. That was about... It's about... Kimberly? <laughs> about $28,000, something like that. It is, you know, we've sort of uh, looked at other apps that have got um, more co uh, complex um, technologies behind them and they're much more expensive, but this one's quite self-contained, so um, not so expensive. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, in theory you can, but then um, we have ethical restraints on yeah. that um, that don't allow us to do that. The only thing that we can really measure is person-to-person um, -person recommendations. Um, 
you know, and, and re referrals, I guess you could call them, you know, and, and that to us is a gold standard in what success is. If somebody finds it useful and they recommend it to a friend, then, then it's been useful. <laughs> yes, I'll say. Yeah, they don't forget that they do get those reminders. Um, I, I thank my group of um, problem gambling counsellors and problem gamblers who advise me on all of my communication stuff for the insights that they've given me on this. One thing that I said to them early in the piece was, is anyone actually going to be bothered to enter all of their bets? And they said, yes, absolutely. It, in sports betting, but in track betting in particular, there's quite a voodoo around keeping all of the data because behind the data there will no doubt be a magic formula. And so what we're saying to people is, you know, well, you know, that's why I, when I was talking about the way that we describe it to problem gamblers, it's quite different from the way that we think of it. And to them it's like, mm, you know, maybe if I have a look at it I can see that every time I bet on Auckland I, you know, win <laughs> every day, you know, you know what I mean? They, 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 they look for their own patterns. Plus, they do get those regular prompts. Have you entered your your best? Yes, yes. That that there there's a there's a notes section where you can put in anything from the weather to uh, the the stars, you know, <laughs> to whatever you think actually might affect the outcome. And 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 like I say, it's kind of a good way to educate people in the long term because in the end they see that those those variables aren't significant at all. Yes, it does. It does allow that, yes. But if you're only entered your, your win, then, then you could look pretty clever. <laughs> <laughs> we can all be self-deceiving in any way that we choose. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, if you're if you're if you're that deep in the mire of self-deception, then you're like in my little kitty catty with the bath. That's you know, yeah. you're just you're just never going to go there. So, this is on the one hand for for people who are, but to a lesser degree, for people who are in treatment and who want to cut down or understand their patterns better. But mostly uh, for people who regard themselves as serious punters, the data actually significant to them. So they, they, you know, they'll be quite um, good at, um, at, and disciplined at putting it in and, and, and admitting to the loss as well. Uh, only in numbers um, and obviously platforms. Um, I was just talking about that before in that um, we, we have a lot of, we have quite a, quite a strict code of ethics um, in when it comes to identifying um, or um, in any way surveilling the behaviour of what we regard as problem gamblers because it, it can just lead to a total breakdown in trust and there, there are ethical issues there that we can't. So all, all we can do is, is, is map number of downloads, the platform of downloads and how many people um, referred to each other. But by association we can also uh, capture a little bit of data in terms of when, we, when people come to our website, we ask them why, you know, how did you come to be here and the same when they turn up for treatment. And so we, there's a bit of tracking should anyone get that far with it. Yeah, I mean, they, they do get, they get as many reminders as they want to, to, to stay on track. Um, they, can, they can ask for more than one a day if they like. I mean, we didn't want to um, become a nuisance and, you know, like uh, some people will only want it every couple of days and some people will want it more than that. So those messages are about, you know, like if you really want to learn something from this, you know, you've got to put in the facts. 
if you if you're not going to do that, there's no point in using it, you know. And 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 as I say, it is it it comes down to that to the magical thinking that that gamblers have that they 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 do want to find patterns and and they're motivated to be honest. You know, there'll be some that just drop out because it's freaking them out too too much. But perhaps perhaps that in itself might make them think twice. It is. It's an it's early intervention. intervention. Yeah. Where, when you've got someone who's in a full addiction running you into nothing, it's not even going to turn that off. I, I thoroughly agree with you. And, um, it's not for every problem. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's for that very, very hard to reach marker, which is the frequent gambler um, who does not associate in any way with being problem gambler. So there will be an Yes. Yeah, I, I, I think that some channel, good channel promotion and some good sustained promotion through those sports things. I, one thing that we really want to do is leverage um, football coverage because in, that, in the first slide you would have seen um, Robbie Waterhouse who's kind of like our, <laughs> you know, he's, he's a bookmaker who kind of became a bit of a star on sports coverage in, in New South <coughs> Wales and kind of caused a lot of bad feeling about the way that the betting and sports had basically melded together. And um, I think that a lot of uh, the sports coverage stations are a bit motivated to, um, to perhaps <coughs> undo some of the damage that they did in, in, in hawking sports betting quite as hard as they did. So we'll be, we'll be certainly pushing them once the football season comes along. One, um, I noticed the takeout with Apple is much higher than with uh, Android. Is that just the number of Apple out there, or do we get on a different platform? It's a very interesting thing. It's it's significantly higher, and I actually don't know. Um, I I assuming that it's market penetration by Apple, but I don't actually know. Love to steal it off you. So Help yourself. <laughs> okay. uh, please put your hands together. Jenny,